Working out is good for you, duh. But recent studies have found a connection between your muscle health and brain health. Let's talk about... evening or whatever time it is for you down there on Earth. I'm your host, Iris, up here on the Pernuvo spaceship. And this is a show where we talk about health, science, and all the other questions that no one dare asks. Hey, look around. There's no shame or stigma here. We can talk about We can talk about And even the fact that are in furry suits. But today, I want to talk about muscles. Did I mention that working out is good for you? You did. It's good to reiterate, though. Well if it isn't my overly eager assistant, my boss sent up here to keep me in check, whatever that means. Do you know what that means? I got your back. As I was saying, new science has been sciencing, and we have some super interesting findings. In order to hear more about it, I'm calling in our AI-enhanced sidekick, Pico. Pico, how goes it, my robotic friend? Hi. Since Descartes, humans have been thinking about mind and body as separate entities. But innovations combining MRIs with machine learning are uncovering relationships between muscle mass and brain volume later in life. We found evidence that higher percentages of muscle mass is a key biomarker to reduced brain degeneration during the aging process. It should be noted that these findings are related solely to muscle mass and not simply exercise as a whole. Lifting weights, for example, builds muscle better than something like yoga. We're talking about a steady build of muscles through tangible daily routines. That is why I'm sharp as a tap. <laughs> the last time you worked out was precisely 5,238 days ago. That can't be right. When scanning the body globally, we're able to identify relationships between seemingly independent organs. This is thanks to two things, the evolution of whole body MRI technology and its integration with machine learning. With these advancements in MRIs, scientists are able to look at scans of the body with high levels of detail and contrast, differentiating muscle mass versus other types of tissue. This is possible thanks to a phenomenon known as NMR, nuclear magnetic resonance, which describes that nuclei are sensitive and responsive to magnetic fields. An MRI machine emits a safe but powerful magnetic field and radio waves, which the nuclei of tissue cells respond to with an electromagnetic signal of their own. Humans then figured out how to interpret these signals into images. What was that? Sorry, too busy working out. These images allow us to look under the hood of a human body in a safe, non-invasive way. But the human body is a hugely complex system with millions of data points to account for. No organ is truly an individual. With the help from AI integration and deep learning, the Pernuvo team, in collaboration with researchers from the Washington University School of Medicine, St. Louis, and the Pacific Neuroscience Institute, are able to study correlations between vast amounts of biomarkers, like muscle mass and brain degeneration, and diseases like Alzheimer's on thousands of participants. For example, machine learning recently identified that having visceral abdominal fat or fat that accumulates around the organs could predict midlife brain atrophy in 10,125 study participants. No visceral fat here, <laughs> that's for sure. Only eviscerated fat. <laughs> Sammy laughs. Science has observed a connection between body fat and illnesses like Alzheimer's dementia since 2008. They observed this by comparing BMI to brain atrophy in a population. However, BMI is a limited metric it doesn't discern between bone mass, muscle mass, and types of body fat. The incorporation of MRI and machine learning into this subject allowed scientists to look at our brains and bodies with a high level of specificity and clarity. It gives us a nuanced understanding of how certain types of fats impact our neurology. That understanding greatly deepens when we're able to look at the body over time. Human bodies age at a generally standardized rate. Before machine learning and routine scanning, it was difficult to chart what aging should look like in the body. If you are scanned regularly over time, it becomes easy for radiologists to track your body's aging. Drastic changes or accelerations of the degeneration process can cue radiologists to the onset of illnesses like Alzheimer's. We might consider that it is worthwhile investment to both monitor for the onset of illnesses through screenings and take lifestyle measures to prevent or slow their onset. That was 59. Measuring pretty good, I'd say, huh? 
Please note that in order to start reaping the benefits, you don't need to become a power lifter. Studies are finding that moderate vigorous physical activity is linked with brain volumes. It should also be noted that this vigorous exercise is defined by elevated heart rate and respiration for 10 to 20 minutes a day, two or three times a week. It is considered the minimum in order to maintain these benefits. Just to clarify a bit, we understand people are humans, not the statistics. So really, any buildup of muscle will do. But that's not optimal. Right, right. Um, I'm still working on this empathy. And there you have it, folks. Exercise, get that heart rate up. Woo! Like and subscribe to stay up to date on all sorts of proactive healthcare and informative videos. Thanks for watching. Let's go for a run. Honestly, I was gonna suggest that too, but not because I want to, but because I think I need to. We could talk about our dissertations. You always have to mention the dissertation. Dissertation, dissertation. Uh, I, oh, I forgot, you don't have one.